Welcome to the On Hollow Ground podcast. Wagwan and hello. Uh, I'm Jack Flynn, vocalist of On Hollow Ground, alongside my good friend and guitarist in On Hollow Ground, and a uh, bit of a vocalist as well, aren't you, mate? Uh, Ryan Scott. And uh, yeah, so this is a new podcast series of starting, and we're going to talk all about the upcoming album, Blood is Blood, which is scheduled to be released sometime in July or August. And uh, yeah, say something. Yeah, so basically what we're going to be doing is I'll be discussing the kind of musical process for when I was writing and stuff like that. It kind of goes through me and then Jack does other lyrics, which I'll be discussing. And then for any singles that we've got out, we will be kind of going through the kind of video process like you know because how we storyboarded it the idea yeah because you you pretty much direct all of our videos don't you jack obviously jay jay shoots them but then you kind of send us all a bit of a plan of what is going to actually be happening who's doing what and yeah that's yeah right. bit of a storyboard as he says yeah yeah so the first episode in this one is going to be the first song that we wrote for this album actually and that's broken um it's been out for just over a year now yeah and um I, I i just thought that you know this would be probably the best place to start seeing as it was the first track that we wrote for the album i mean it's not necessarily the first track on the album but it's the first track from the new material that we've written yeah it was the first track written and it's probably the most popular of the few singles that we've released so far yeah, so I feel definitely. like people probably associate this track with us at the minute, obviously. When the new stuff comes out, that might change, but as it stands at the minute, I'd say it's our probably most popular tune. Yeah, and I think that we sort of anticipated that as well with the catchiness and, you know, all the stuff yeah, we put into it. It was kind of written to be like that, like a lot of a stuff on the single. album. Yeah, a lot of stuff on the album is slightly different, a bit more experimental, but this was like... Yeah, well, it's written for purpose, really, and it? it takes a few boxes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I remember we probably started writing this probably. So last year was 2019. I'd, I'd probably say about winter 2018 that we started yeah. this track. Uh, maybe before. Yeah, it, I'm it sure I've got a project which was like August 2018 or something like that. Well, there you go then, yeah. Yeah, because um, before we had song titles, like sometimes I'd say which day I'd written the song so I could kind of keep chronologically in my head which tune was which. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, we, cause I remember No Shade Greener for many years was just called JFK. We just have like random working titles. and Yeah, yeah. I don't think this was any different, really. Yeah. Drop and it, bad man. And track one. <laughs> easy E, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, like, why don't you just kick off like yeah, so basically about the, we about the musical side yeah. of it, the instrumental. Yeah, music. so we're done. We just released our old EP. Do you know what? Do you know what, actually, 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 um, maybe we'll, we'll leave this in as well. Maybe if you just say like, do you want to just talk about how our writing process works with you know with you and then me and then Joe and blah blah blah. Yeah, that's what I was. That's that. what I was gonna start out with you. Yeah. Oh, okay, darling. Continue. Yes. Sorry. So yeah, we'd um, obviously we'd. Been do you need any more the... dramatic pause before you come back in? <laughs> no, I thought it was because you were going to edit it. Are you no, editing no, this? we're leaving it all in. Nah, keep right. it in. Do you need a bit? Go on then. Sorry, man. Right, so... So, yeah, we'd kind of toured the old EP, Constant State, and then me, Jack, and Joe was talking, because usually I write the kind of music hand it to Joe and then he kind of structures it and then says what he wants. He writes his all, all his own drums and stuff, but he's more invested in the structuring of each track. Um, so the three of us were basically saying we wanted something a little bit different for this one. So we've been, I listen to a lot of hip hop as it is and Jack listens to quite a lot of hardcore stuff. Um, so we were like, maybe we could kind of blend metalcore with a bit of hardcore, a bit of hip hop. And I think, Broken was probably the first product of that happening. Because yeah, definitely. Because I don't think anything on Constant State really touched any of those areas, really. No, nah, and that, that main riff, which 
the main riff, which was the first riff that I wrote, and it's like, it's like nice and chunky and riffy, and like it's got quite a lot of hardcore stuff in it. But like those mm-hmm. harmonics, like the hardcore side of metalcore, like a lot of people use those kind of um, natural harmonics and stuff and blend them into a riff, which is quite chuggy. Like, yeah. um, reminds me of some of that, um, what are they called now? That hoodie you've got. Gideon. Gideon, yeah, it reminds me of something yeah. they do. Um, but yeah, I thought we, we'll just do a bit of a angsty track, no cleans. There's a bit of pitch yelling later on. But um, yeah, to I be think fair, it's a, mo- bit of a, like a bit of a departure from some of our sort of like standard setup, really. I remember one of the first tracks we did without any cleans at all was, was it a life in decline, like way back? Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's like cleans have always been. They've not been like a massive focal point, but they've always been. They've always the been there in the track, haven't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Whereas in this one, um, they are still there, and you still do have that 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 melody side of it, the melodic side, but it's just in a gruffer. Tone yeah, with really. the cleans on this album, I wanted to fit it in where it's relevant instead of just doing an angry heavy track with then a clean chorus. Yeah. Like that's been around for the last twenty years. Like, you know, <laughs> we, you know, we're kind of moving away from that when you've got your, you know, your super heavy bands now. You don't necessarily need cleans for it to get out there because purely, like, harsh vocal music it seems to be getting much more popular. Yeah, yeah. And but then there is... Neither of us can sing either, so it's all right. <laughs> yeah, very tr- we try. We do our best, which is why I've moved to Pitch Yelling, because I can semi do that. <laughs> and then we're yeah, going to talk about our lives another day, and it's going to be like, oh, yeah, we're really good at singing. <laughs> yeah, even that, the chorus for that is kind of Pitch Yelling, isn't it? It's not really clean singing, but I don't yeah, know. Well, it's I just, mean, I've, I've kind of always you find that, you find you that our music doesn't necessarily what you're always comfortable with, don't it? Don't you? Yeah, no. yeah, exactly. I think um, this track actually um, was when you know all the all the beatdowns in metalcore started to sort of be involved and stuff. And I remember saying to you, just let's just try and squeeze a beat down in somewhere. I know it's not us. I know it's not us. But if we're going to try and start this new path and you know go down these different avenues and just start experiencing like you yeah, know, it was it was well music, weird because this is the first beatdown that were featured in the track and for ages I was like I really want to put one in but it just feels forced and yeah. then we did this and then like we literally put that like pitch shifted vocal before and it kicked in and we were like fuck <laughs> <laughs> I was like I went from being like nah it just feels forced man and then played it press space bar played it on the demo and we were just like yeah yeah <laughs> And, and all that like that pitch shifted like lower lower pitch shift vocal, um, that's something that you and I have just fallen in love with. And you know, for people who, when they get around to listening to people never learn from the album, you'll definitely see that <laughs> it's had more more life elsewhere on the album. Yeah, definitely. And it, that kind of derives from hip hop a lot as well. Because like I said before, I listen yeah. to a lot of hip hop music, and there is a lot of like in build ups, the voices pitch shifted really high or really low. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, there's a few tunes I'm listening to at the minute where like the kind of pitch shift keeps going up and down for a bit of an effect, and yeah, we yeah. we realised it makes quite a good kind of kick in it, you know, instead of your typical like someone going you did this to me, dun 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 dun, dun. you know, like <laughs> just some really like yeah proper yeah. stereotypical I hate my life metalcore kicking. We were like, fuck it, stick a pitch shifter on it, and it's cool now. <laughs> And, and I think that, you know, like the lyrical content is when we get to it, you know, it, it's, it's pretty dark, but you don't necessarily I get that. I don't I, I hope you don't anyway. Well, it comes across like with, with, fun, with, with, it? with the catchy chorus and stuff. Mm. Yeah, like it's I mean, it's not exactly like a big party vibe. It's not exactly like these nuts or something like that, but it's that's probably to do with the phrasing, though, because the phrasing yeah. that you're doing in with it really fits in with that riff. Yeah, it just kind of yeah. gels, doesn't it? And, um, and, and like, and like for all the phrasing and stuff, um, you know, like Ryan will write the core of a track, and then we'll go in and arrange it, like you know, Joe and I. And then after that, I'll you know kick some ideas around lyrically and shit, and then just start to try to like you know fill holes, won't I, with, with, with the phrasing, and then bring it to you and see what you think. Because obviously, you know, it's it's one thing for a vocalist who isn't a trained musician like myself to write vocals and phrasing and stuff, and you know. Eight times out of ten, I might get it right, but 
you've obviously got something in mind musically and rhythmically that sometimes you have to go over and say actually that might work a little bit better if you were to move that across that's too many syllables in there Do you know yeah I, mean? I think it's because I'm I, when I write I visualize everything on a grid because while yeah. I'm programming drums and like thinking of kind of notation I write to a bit of a grid whereas with me it's it's more just you know that sounds yeah it's <laughs> less mechanical it's less mechanical the way yeah, you kind yeah, of do your rhythms fluid, in it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I think a bit of a combination of those two kind of writing perspectives, it kind of works, because sometimes I get a little bit too into everything yeah. has to be perfectly locked in, Yeah. and like sometimes it kind of loses a bit of... And I think that's sometimes where like yeah. I can rein you in, and then other times where you can tighten me up and, you know, yeah. say actually that would be a bit more concise if you were to, you know, move that across and yeah, definitely. You know, be a bit more like, rhythmically led vocally. Mm. Do you want to talk about lyrics? Um, yeah. Or is there anything sure. else that you wanted to mention? Um, I was just basically going to go into about like the use of electronic kits in this and stuff. Yeah, do do. Um, yeah, because like I said, hip hop is one of the big influences in this track and across the album, kind of like you won't listen mm-hmm. to it and think, oh, this is like hip hop metal, but it's definitely got in, like influences in there. Like there's certain parts, like in this track with the the bridge, for example, when it's like point the finger, uh, I mean, there's a hip hop kit, like an electric kit with the 808 sub doing the main riff. And that rhythm for that main riff is featured quite a few times. Like it's kind of that, that's why it kind of works structurally because it's not really changing much, but it's different variation of it. Cause like, for example, at the end, you've got that big heavy breakdown which mm. is the exact same rhythm as the main riff, but it's just 10 BPM slower and it's a kind of dissonant chug. So it's like another feature of hip hop music is keeping the same concept, but just adding and taking away the layers. Yeah, yeah. So and that's I like... Think that going forward, you're going to see an awful lot more of that in our music, aren't you? Yeah, definitely. And like with this track, a lot of it is the same, but just done slightly differently. Like yeah. I said, the rhythm concept is the same. Like in quite a few of the riffs, the rhythm concept mm. is very similar, but just done a slightly different way. And um, I've picked up that that's how bands like Immure and the recent stuff they write and stuff like when Josh Travis does it, he'll kind of get a rhythm and then just add and remove elements yeah. as it goes yeah. on. So it that's feels similar, but different in a mm-hmm. way. It's really weird, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, something I'd. I'd, I'd, I'd do want to talk about as well it's just like it's such a like minute change really but it really does have such a huge effect it's just you know the last breakdown where you know we are at a tempo and then we slow it down by 10 bpm um just for that extra sludginess and heaviness at the end yeah and in the middle beat down there's like a fill which goes down in tempo as well and then yeah, that goes yeah. back and then it picks it back up and that's and, something that we'd kind of got rid of for a while, wasn't it? Like yeah, we didn't. We didn't. Re- it was all the same tempo for a long time, and we yeah, thought this one yeah. were like, let's just go for something slightly different. And I think it does add a heavy element as a tempo change, but it can also be a bit random and overused. I think you've got to be really kind of sparse creative, with your creative, yeah. but sparse with your tempo changes. Whereas like sometimes it feels a bit off its head if it's just like you're like from one to another mm-hmm. str- like it feels mm-hmm. less like a song and more like lots of songs chopped together if you've got too many tempo changes well i remember like discussing that tempo change with you and it just been like because originally it was just written at the same tempo wasn't it and then yeah we thought we'd go down by 10 bpm and i just remember thinking this is just so odd like hearing it 10 bpm slower but it's because, but that's because your ears you, are conditioned so to, to it. Yeah, yeah your exactly. ears are conditioned to listening to it at the same tempo. So when like, it goes by down by point, even, yeah, but like but by that point, I'd listen to that demo maybe like thirty or forty times when I've been writing. Yeah, to it, you know what I mean. <laughs> and if you're listening, if you're listening to that for the first time, which when you're writing it, you've played the track thirty yeah. times over, like you said, you, it's totally different experience when you listen to it first time because you're like, oh, that's just how it goes. Whereas when you make a subtle yeah, change when yeah, you're writing, sure. you're yeah. like, oh, it sounds odd, it's weird. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, let's talk about the lyrics for a bit then, Jack, if you're cool with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like, you know, it's, it's no secret to you and the rest of the band and stuff, but it's all 
massively emotional on the entire album, really, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, and there's a reason for that, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, like, 2018, summer 2018, uh, my dad passed away, and when we were writing all this stuff, you know, all the new material, I've really got into a personal space with like, with my writing. Like, back when we wrote the first EP, all the lyrics were... Like, I used to think a bit like like um, just like public commentary, you know, more like climate change and um, you know like those kinds of issues and shit, and like a lot of it spent on time and money and that kind of thing. Stuff that did affect me and stuff that was personal, but not like mega mega like at the core of me at my like you know <laughs> my spirit level personal sort of thing. Mm. Um, and through you know from that first EP all the way up to here, it's just been getting more, increasingly more and more personal and I think that for a lot of musicians it probably go the other way I think you know people generally start you know very very personal and you know run out of things to write about so become a bit more broader but with me it's sort of like narrowed in on all that stuff and especially it came all to a head when when he passed away and you know I've really started to reflect on the relationship we had and it wasn't a fantastic relationship really so you know, a, a lot of this album is just me venting a lot of those frustrations and all that grief, but, you know, also remembering some, you know, some decent times with him as well. And this one, it, again, I, I think some things sometimes like happen for a reason, because when I did write lyrics for this one, if I were to put them in order of sort of like, like seven stages of grief or something like that, I'd sort of, I, I would put this right at the beginning because this kind of goes back to my childhood and you know feeling it's, it's always hard isn't it when you say like oh i felt left out as a kid and that kind of thing but yeah you know, i was only a child and i dealt with you know my parents splitting up and divorcing and stuff and then you know going from one parent to another and you know one parent wasn't as good as the other parents and that kind of thing mm. and you know a lot of that really sort of it's reinforced in his lyrics. Like I'm just looking through these now and like one of the lyrics, one of the big ones is I'm falling behind. And, you know, because of so much was going on in my life at the time and, you know, the destruction of my parents' relationship and it was, you know, really quite fiery and nasty at some points. And, you know, my dad didn't always do, you know, tend to do the right thing, to be honest. And I think uh, with this album lyrically, I think there's a couple of things that you said to me outside of writing lyrics which really stuck with me and when I listened to the lyrics of the album back I get it yeah. because you were kind of basically saying like in obviously you didn't have the greatest relationship with him but then mm -hmm. you were describing the kind of stages of grief and to me this album is different each track is you waking up a different day and having a different feeling and like you said <laughs> you put this right at the start and you said yeah. you were you you said to me when we were, were out and about one time just I think it was me you and Bob and you were saying yeah. Like, you're confused because you feel guilt and you feel like you're kind of justified him to be this top dad and you were like, just because he's not here anymore, it doesn't mean that my relationship was great with him. And that, that got me thinking. I was like, that's a really good point. Like, it doesn't actually change the past, does it, just because someone's not here anymore? <laughs> and, exactly. And I mean, yeah. like, y y you were there at the funeral, man. Like, yeah, <laughs> definitely. And you were you, there uh, right beside me and stuff. And... Said you paced, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I, I remember, you know, thinking about what I was going to say, you know, that day, and it was obviously, you know, one of the biggest days of my life. And I think the fact that you've not bullshitted yourself through this has given yeah. me a thousand times more respect from you, and I'm sure anyone else who listens to this will be with me on that as well, because, like, you could have, in this album, you could easily be like, oh, my dad's gone, oh, no, I'm so sad, but <laughs> you've, took, you've taken the most yeah. honest approach to it I've ever seen, and I think it's made really good music. I think this is the oh, best thanks. stuff you've written lyrically. Oh, thank you very much. And um, it, 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 <laughs> it hits a bit harder than, oh, the government's fucked. Uh, yeah, we know that. We, that's that's been done. We we know about that. <laughs> we, yeah, don't need it. we don't need any more, it, any more bands telling us about Brexit and stuff like, you know, it's... Not, not interested by it anymore <laughs> i know i know and like you know all, all those bands out there who are writing you know that social commentary stuff and that's fantastic and obviously some people do go to your music mm. for that but i don't know like the the way that we're, we're approaching our art now and we're approaching our music it's 
I, I don't want to say it's, it's more selfish, but it's, it's just more like, you know, it's, it's more what we want to do, isn't it? Like we're starting to push those boundaries. I remember like, when Constant State came around, we were saying we want to push it heavier. We want to push it cleaner. We want to push it in all these different directions. And now, you know, we've even got more directions that we want to push it in because of the confidence that we gained from that last album. Yeah, definitely. And um, I think the, the lyrics are inclusive because generally most people have gone through some form of grief. Yeah. So yeah, you exactly. can relate to it. And whereas I, if it's... I, I did want people to, you know, be able to sort of read my words and, or hear my words or whatever, you know, and hopefully, you know, take something away from it. And, you know, if, if, if nothing, you know. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and I just want to talk about like one of the, like the entire tracks featured around this one line, really. And that's point the finger at me. There's three pointing back at you and, um, you know, it's, it's nothing spectacular or anything like that, but, you know, take your right hand now and point a finger. <laughs> you see one point, one finger pointing in one direction, you know, away from you, and then you see, you know, three others pointing back at you. And I just remember, like, as a kid, feeling a little bit different because, you know, as an only child, I dealt with all this on my own. And, like, I remember, like, getting mocked and stuff in primary school because I was, like, one of the only kids in school who, you know, whose parents weren't together. And it's just, like... Did you? Yeah. Like, <laughs> really? Because <laughs> <Just> like... <laughs> mine weren't. But, like, that was just... I don't know. Maybe yeah, you're a yeah, couple well... of years older than me, but it was, like, <laughs> I don't know, from my generation, it was pretty normal, really. Like, obviously, I was an only child until my brother was born, like, 12 yeah, years later. But, yeah, but well, yeah I've, like, I've never heard of even... anyone being mocked for the parents being separated. That's weird, is that? Well, even going further on than that, like, I remember at university, I'd, I'd fallen out with this guy. Um, mm. He was a complete pretentious prick. Well, you've been a Daver um, again, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. No, I actually wasn't. <laughs> I actually want for once, Ryan, honestly. <laughs> and I remember him saying to someone, and it, and it got passed back to me, and, you know, it was like, oh, he's frustrated because he comes from a broken home. And like, Motherfucker, you don't know anything about me. Broken home? I know, yeah, and, and that's why this song's called Broken. Is it? Yeah. Oh, so this was is, is more it? about the. I, well, well, yeah. I didn't know yeah, that was yeah. where the title came from. I knew what it was about, but I didn't know the the term "broken" was because of that exact incident. That's pretty interesting. Isn't that? Yeah, yeah, like the lyrics as well. Um, mm. You know, um, break this broken home. It's it's about you know breaking that trend and you know making sure that you know I get my life on track and. Um, persevering and you know, sort of not repeating the mistakes that my dad made with me, you know. So like, basically, like it's more of a social stereotype from everyone yeah. about people whose parents important, have kind of parted. Then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so um, the whole point in the finger at you is being like, your parents aren't together, so that means you're fucked in the head when that's totally not the case. Yeah, but I mean, uh, that's, that's another thing where you can work on many different levels as well, because, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's not necessarily about, you know, just the family. I mean, in, in my case it is, but it's, it's those judgments that you make to people. Um, and I know it sounds very spiritual, and very earthy now for me to say this, but, you know, for those people who judge people on circumstances that, you know, like whether it be race or, um, you know, belief or anything like that, you know, you, motherfucker, you're pointing your finger at me. You don't know me. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> that there's, kind of thing. there's this, the, the exact same stereotype. Um, I don't know if any of you know, but I work in a care home for kids who have mm. been taken by social services. And again, like at schools and stuff, they, they can't get into mainstream schools because they're branded with this, you're in care, so you're a trouble causer. Yeah, it's totally yeah. not the case. I work with some absolutely fantastic kids who have so much going for them. And they're just branded by society as like, oh, you're on you know, you've not had a regular childhood, you're not going anywhere, and it's mm. absolute bollocks. It really, really does my in, because no one knows these kids like we get to know them, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, and it's a similar sort of thing to being kind of branded as, you know, oh, your parents aren't together, so you're not a normal kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, it's, it's weird, isn't it? Because when, when when you say it like that, it just seems like so so small and just so like flippant and just like... Christ, you're writing a song about that. And I do get that. But at the same time, like, these are the things that, you know, shaped like six to eight year old me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And to be honest with you, I think to me, the most clever thing about it is it's got this deep spiritual meaning. But when you listen to it, it's a bit of fun. 
Yeah, yeah. And I exactly. think there's yeah. quite a few tracks on this album where when you first started writing it lyrically, you were like, I'm not going to go too deep with it. Like, the meaning behind it is going to be quite metaphorical and deep, but mm-hmm. it's going to be a bit, like, di- kind of masked as a bit of fun and a bit of, like, yeah, you know, like a bit of angst, like, so you can get your groove on on stage, but then when you actually break it down, there is quite a lot behind it. <laughs> well, look, like, like, I'm looking at lyrics now, and it's funny you should say, you know, I'm just going to read this line now. Fresh out the door with all these thoughts in my head. Fresh with this metaphor that drapes your bed. Um, like, I'm not going to go into the meaning of that and spill all that out, but that's exactly what you've just said. You know, it's, it's yeah. quite a bit of attitude. And it's a bit by fun, but giving it a, a bit of meaning f- f- to f- fresh to out, lyric. like that, that exactly, kind of changes yeah. its its meaning, doesn't it? Yeah. Just because I'm writing something that's incredibly difficult doesn't mean that you know it has to be a drag musically. And you know, I, as everyone knows, like this kind of music, punk, rock, metal, blah blah blah. You know, it's, it's always lent itself to those people who, you know, have felt a little bit different, a little bit judged, a little bit like of an outcast kind of thing. Hey, yeah, uh, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you think you um, got it. Oh, you think you got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, at this time, we're just going to uh, slip out of this, out of this seriousness and just cram in a little story. Uh, so this little segment's called Tell Us a Story. Tell us a story. Oh, go on, tell us a story, mate. All right, we will. Right, so it's coming up to the end of the episode, and what we're going to be doing at the end of each one is telling a little story. So it's story time. Eventually, I might write a jingle to go over it, but I haven't yet. So, yeah, um, that we haven't got an intro. But, Jack, are you wanting to tell a bit of a story today for us? Yeah, because I thought, like, seeing as this one's about broken... It could be the time when I broke something on my anatomy. What, your brain? Because <laughs> that's what it sounds like right now. <laughs> no, so basically, um, 26th of July. How do you remember that? How do you remember end, that? Because uh, <laughs> it was like about four or five days before I went to Canada, wasn't it? And I just remember like, the date for that as well. When that Chinese um, guy laughed at you. Oh, fucking hell. Yeah. That we're all peg leg pirate and you're going arr. <laughs> but I'll, I'll get to that's, that. that's proper tight one. Right, crack on then. Go on. So basically, we were playing a gig. I don't even know where, where, where were it? It was like Birmingham way, but I can't remember what it was called. It was somewhere West Midlands, but I can't remember the name of it. It ended oh, up being all right, actually. Fucking called. But yeah, we were playing this gig and it didn't turn up being that all right, did it? Like the sound was awful. Yeah, but there were a few people there, weren't there? Yeah, actually, when you when you say it that way, like there were some people really into it, which is yeah, you know, always 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 positive. But yeah, we we're playing this. <laughs> I think it was the first time we were going to play all new materials. Is that right? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. So we had a new set. We were playing in a venue we'd never played before in a city we'd never played in. We had a couple of people saying we were going to come down, so we were just like, oh fucking hell, over the moon, or you know, as it was, we were getting paid decent that night, and blah blah blah. Everything was set up for a fucking sweet night. And then when we got to the venue, there were loads of issues with the sound desk and shit and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, whatever. We're professionals in it. We've got to get through it. <laughs> got on stage. Started playing Our Lies, which is the, the first track on the upcoming album, Blood is Blood, out in, Oct- um, out in August. Well plugged that. And there's this riff. Do you, do you want to do the riff? Do you want to? Ben-o, 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 ben-o. Alright. This is just stressful you talking and me doing that. Right, carry on. Can you hear enough click? Anyway. that riff kicks in and we're all jumping. And I remember like Ryan saying from day dot, like, that's a riff that you need to jump on. And like Bob's like, I'm not fucking jumping, but me, Batty, and you were jumping. Yeah. And um, all of a sudden, my left ankle just went, and I was just like, shit, what the fuck's happened there? And I thought because Bob had these massive, big fucking claw boppers on, I thought that Bob had like jumped, started jumping, jumped on my ankle, and like made me sprain it or go over on it. And I was just like, fucking hell, my ankle kills. And I could barely stand up on it. And I, I couldn't put any weight on it at all. And I was just like, shit, this is bad. 
but I thought mm, I could probably get through the set anyway. Like, like I'm not in much pain to be honest. It's, it's just, it's just odd. I just thought I'd like you know, got pins and needles in it or some shit. Um, so I played through the rest of the songs and stuff, and I got to the end, and like every other song, like someone in band had asked me, like, "You all right?" I was like, "Yeah, I think I've possibly like broken my ankle or broken a bone or something." I'm surprised you lasted till the end of that set, man. <laughs> it was pretty fucking brutal in some. That must have. Uh... <laughs> well, I'd, I think because yeah, like you have all the adrenaline going through you and shit. I think it. it, it I just fought through it basically. Um, I remember it hurting massively initially, and then it sort of wore off like during the set, and then afterwards it was just like the biggest case of pins and needles ever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we we got off stage and shit, and then <clears throat> like, well, I was actually still sat, sat on stage, and I remember sitting with my legs dangling off the side of the stage and just like taking my shoe off. And just looking at my ankle, I was like, it's not swollen. I don't get it. Like, what the fuck's going on with my ankle? But for some reason, I can't, like, flex it up and down. I was like, this is bad. I've definitely broken something. So I had to hop over to the other side of the room. I'm like, oh, I'm sure it'd be fine in a bit. Like, the pain started to ease off and that. And we were like, all right, it's time to go on, blah, blah, blah. Um, probably won't go to hospital. Probably just go tomorrow morning or something like that. It's going to be, like, Friday night, I think, on it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think. And, yeah, because Bob was like, I've got my kit, man, isn't it? And he's like, no, like, it was the biggest priority, and you were sat there with your ankle where your knee should be. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And that's when Frick's like, I've got my kit, man. Can we set off soon? Well, we need to figure something out, mate, because Jack's fucking ankle's not where it should be. Yeah, because like, the, the, issue, <laughs> the issue with it being is like, we, we, we always take two cars to gigs if we're not in a van and me, me and you alternate it and Bob always drives because he's a fucking idiot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and Drive me, Bob. I, I'd driven to that gig, hadn't I? So like, we had to yeah. get you covered, didn't we? And good to get temporary insurance in your car, didn't I? Yeah, so like, um, that came out at band pot that night. Um, and I got not, that, and not that people care, I don't know why you're telling them that part. <laughs> <laughs> we, so we next episode we're going to take a break from music writing and we're going to tell you about our finances fuck off <laughs> <laughs> basically like all the way in the back like on the way back to Leeds I was just you know fiddling around my ankle just sort of like you know thinking oh is that broken like you know, are all bones there and I'm like oh yeah everything seems to be there and I was just like running my hand off and I don't know if you want to take your hand now guys but like Take your hand and take your calf and just roll it down, and then you'll start to feel your Achilles tendon. Well, I got to an asthma castle in floppy skin all the way down to my heel. I was just like, uh, shit, I think I'm mm. my Achilles. And I remember looking at you and being like, I think it's my Achilles. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, for like, like, oh, I don't know two or three months i was just off my feet in a boot and that and you and i well you and i just chilled forever and you like you were pretty much my savior for those weeks <laughs> <laughs> come out to cut you around everywhere, didn't I? yeah <laughs> take you out for your day release yeah. didn't i yeah so i thought you know I'll, I'll, I'll never forget that man i remember Hopefully when we were in head, um man. well batty waited in hospital <laughs> weird to like seven in the morning didn't they yeah uh, man like the amount of times I told him, you know, bye, just just go home, it's fine, it's fine. And no, it's okay, I'll sort it. To his credit, he stayed there the entire night and he was absolutely knackered himself. And, you know, he was up and down to the vending machine for me and that. Um, you know, he, he proper looked after me that night and I've got to give him massive, massive props because, like, <laughs> you know, being in a and at like two o'clock in morning on your own or all the way until like 10 o'clock in morning. Long was it 10? Thing. I thought it was like 7 or something. Yeah, no, we, we, we got out of 10 because we had to wait for a chemist to open to get me some painkillers and some blood thinners and shit. Um, Christ. And, like, he sorted me out, he put me in a taxi and that. Um, really as, long as, Bob that as long as Bob started work on time and wasn't too, too tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, like, this, this is the complete difference between the like, members in it. Like, you're there like coming after the fact and you know carting me around and that kind of thing by staying with me all night <laughs> Joe was concerned being back at car cracking jokes and stuff Bob had to get to work <laughs> I've only sold four fucking cars this week bad bad work it man I'd... prick oh man oh. we love you Bob we do he won't be fucking listening to this anyway he's not bothered is he 
No, he didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> but I will, though, so that's why I just bigged him up here. But no, seriously, big shout out to Bai. Um, if he's ever in hospital again. Well, actually, I'd, I'll let him tell that story on the podcast because I sat with him in hospital, didn't I, as well? Mm-hmm. Oh, did <laughs> Me and Bob were asleep out front. <laughs> when you're uh, watching QVC in his car. <laughs> QVC! <laughs> anyway, that's another story for another day. Right, so at this point, we're going to um, do a, you know, like a small little watch along. The, the video is just four or five, so it's, it's a pretty quick one. But if you just go to YouTube, if you want to join in, uh, type in on Hologram Broken, and it will say Point of Finger, new single, March 2019. So it's not exactly new anymore, but um, and then we'll count you down. Are you ready, Ryan? Yep. Yep. All right. Five, four. Actually, should we go on play or should we go on one? Um... One and then play. And then you play it on play. Yeah, but can you count from an obscure number like <laughs> nine? Count from nine. All right. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three and three thirds. Oh, that's four. Three, two, one, play. Oh, I didn't turn mine down. <laughs> So yeah, um, we've turned them down so we, you know, we're not getting a commentary and shit, but this was um, filmed, I think, January time, and that's why you can see the, the snow on the on the hilltops and stuff. It was filmed in Hately Bridge um, and on Scar Reservoir as well. So it's fair, when we got there, the snow, had, the snow had cleared up and we got to the set and we were like, this has still got snow, this is brilliant. Because then, like, if you look in the background at, like, that big kind of hill covered in snow, we were like, yeah, this is what we're after. Yeah, it, it, for some reason, it just <laughs> snow added production value. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we rented snow. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we got this massive snow machine. Like, yeah, one, one. I mean, we I bought guess, that bridge you know, as well. Do you know that snow bridge, in Hollywood that. not real? <laughs> is it not? <laughs> Watch is it washing like powder or something? <laughs> fucking Bob's personal, isn't it? It's just fucking salt in it, lads. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, like, the, the costume change, like, the, sorry, the costume choice, rather, in this, um, it, it, it comes down to the attitude and, you know, lyrically it comes along with it as well and it's fighting against, you know, those, those judgments that were placed on you and fighting against your background and fighting against, you know, all that you came up against. Um, and, it, you know, you're in a battle... It feels like a war. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, yeah. And you know, thankfully, uh, my mum's partner. He works uh, on a sort of like it's a place where you know, children go on a residential and shit. And we, you know, <laughs> for free, we got to roam these grounds and, and shoot this video. And obviously, not the reservoir, but. Um, you can see that like, we're in the trees and stuff, and you know, running around. Hundred yeah, percent. You don't need a huge budget to make a decent video if you know the right people and you've got a creative enough imagination. Yeah, and if you've got CGI um, gunshots like that as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again, that's what the annoying people are. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Jay sorted that one out for us, didn't he? Big up Jay Hillier. <laughs> I just remember it being so fucking cold on that bridge as well. I remember like, being really thankful yeah, I brought my gloves along. I don't know how you're playing guitar there. No, I know. The volume was down, so my take... My take wasn't recorded in, sadly, but... Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun to film, to be fair. It was... It and was all like... these guys are just our friends, aren't they? You know, yeah, just to, our uh, friends who were but... dressed up in black with, like, airsoft guns. Yeah. I mean, real Big guns, that's Dalton. real gun shots. <laughs> <laughs> Big up Niff Dalton, Guy Robinson, James Howe, Brad Neverett, Wade Hooker, right. and Ben Tapman, who, uh, who I'm going to get into a bit of a... Bit into a physicality within a minute, I'm gonna get my PE kit out and you know, try and fucking yeah. do him. Eesh. There you go. Yeah, all coordinated by um, Ben Tapman. Is this, you know, he just, this wanted, to, he just wanted to kick your head in, I think. He was like, Oh, <laughs> fight like scene with Jack, I'll coordinate it. I'm gonna <laughs> suplex you, you little prick. <laughs> and it wasn't actually something we were gonna put in, but um, you know, he just wanted to kick your head in, like I said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like he came on the set and he had some sort of you know. He's got some um, stage fighting background, and we just choreographed that, and it turned out quite nicely, didn't it? Really, oh, I love that yeah. direction there. I know, yeah, it, I remember when he first showed us that when we were stood in that forest, and we were like, "Yeah, put that yeah. in just before the drop." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
This is my favourite bit here. Oh, this this took so many shots and so many uh, like takes to do did that end bit when you were falling over. Yeah, and, and then the edit as well where it's on the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, Chloe, Paul, um, appreciated that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like this at the end though when, when they're all just standing there. I quite yeah. like that. I think it's cool. It's quite cinematic. The, the, the only thing that makes me think is, you know, they've still got a clear shot of us, still like the sparkers. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, a lot of films are like that where, like, you you know. Film, I mean, jo- John Wick should have died 40 times in the second one, but he didn't because well, it's a film. Yeah. You know. I mean, if we're talking about Home Alone as well, Macaulay Culkin probably should have died. So. Yeah, social services should have probably got involved, to be fair. He should, I should have been looking after him for the job. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know how you, how do you want to wrap this up, but that's pretty much the story behind Broken, isn't it? Yeah, we'll, um, we'll be releasing one of these for each single we've released, and then in, in, in the future we'll be releasing ones about just every, we're going to do one for every track on the album, but we're going to get mm. the video ones out of the way first because they're already out there. Yeah, 